Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to cover a new topic called debugging. We have already covered advanced UI automation and we have covered all these topics. And also we have covered advanced control flow and we have seen example of all this topic in the playlist. Now it's time to start a new topic called debugging. And in this, the topic is perform remote debugging when building automation projects. Now remote debugging for this, which course should you study in UiPath Academy? Let me show you. In UiPath Academy, search for the topic remote debugging with studio. And this is the course which you have to complete. You can easily find this course by going to courses and search for remote debugging with studio. This is around one hour course. In this video, I'm going to make it quite easy and give you a demonstration of what is a remote debugging looks like. And post that you can spend your own time to go through the entire material. Before starting this particular course, let me give you a small demonstration of a remote debugging for this. In my UiPath studio, I have added a simple activity called message box. Here I'm saying good morning Rakesh. Now let me show you my remote machine. So this is my remote machine, which is connected. I have another laptop where I have connected using the remote desktop. Now I have connected to the remote desktop and it is completely blanket. Nothing is being done here. If I wanted to debug, so the topic is remote debug. I'll go to debug tab and you can see my remote debugging is enabled. I'm going to teach you how do you configure remote debugging, but let's see the demonstration. If I'm going to run this, if I'm going to debug this, what is happening? If I look at keep my remote desktop side by side and I'm going to show you here what's happening. So here it is saying downloading project. Temporarily, it is downloading to a temp folder in the remote machine. Here it says debug started for file main. Okay, so now we will wait for a few seconds. Once the download is complete, you will see what are the next things that are happening. Now you can see the project transferred, transferring assembly. So you can see a lot of things are happening. Restoring the NuGet packages, packages restored. Now what happened? The message box, this workflow, I have run it from my laptop. However, the debugging is actually happening on the remote PC and you can see good morning Rakesh. The output is appearing inside my another PC. So this is called remote debugging. This is a demonstration of remote debugging. That means you are debugging. You are not debugging on the laptop where the developer is developing. Rather, you are debugging it in the production system where your actual bot might be running or you are debugging in any other machine which is remote. So you can see when I ran it, the output has appeared in my remote machine. Let me click on OK. And after that, you will see if I go to the output automation rocket execution started, uh, sorry, execution ended. OK, so now if I go here to my remote machine, you can see it says job finished succeeded. So now what happened? The entire debugging has happened on the remote PC, not on my PC. Now, why remote? debugging is required. Now here you can get the explanation as an automation developer. You can test and debug processes remotely even on the actual production machine, taking into account changes in hardware, software and permissions. So your laptop, the developer's laptop might have a different hardware configuration, a software configuration and permissions wherein your actual production machine where the automation is going to run might have a different configuration. That's why it is always a good practice to always test it in the target system, right? So that you are 100% sure that your automation that you have developed is going to run. By doing so, the automation runs reliably and maintains the integrity of the process. So this is the reason why you need remote debugging. Now the next topic is how do you set up remote debugging. So in this course here you have something called setup remote debugging. Now many of us may or may not have a remote PC to check this out or how do you set it up? 
In this video, I am going to demonstrate each step by step process for you to set a remote debugging. How do you configure it? I am going to talk here. The very first step, what you do as a developer, you are working on a laptop. On that laptop, you check what is the version of studio you are using. In this example, I am using 2023.10.3. The same thing I am going to check in the remote PC. In the remote PC, I have opened UiPath Assistant Help and I am checking the version here 2023.10.3. So both the versions are matching on my laptop as a developer and also on the remote PC, the versions are matching. Let's see how the remote configuration is actually done. And this is actually defined in this particular step. Configure the remote agent. And here are the steps given in detail. Okay, how to set the port number, how to set the password, what is this? Now everything will be clear if you look at my notepad. In the notepad, I have made it pretty simple. Now look at it, what I'm going to do. The very first thing you need to determine how the installation is done on the remote machine. So the remote machine, you might have installed the studio per machine installation. That means all your studio UiPath files will be there inside program files folder. Or else you might have installed per user installation wherein all your program files of UiPath might be there in the application data folder. Let me show both of it. For example, program files. So if you see, if I copy this and I go to my remote machine, I'll open the file explorer. And if I'm going to simply, or you can do it on the run prompt. Now what is happening? You can see program files, UiPath Studio, and inside this, all my files are there. Now in this, one of the file is UiPath Remote. If I scroll down slowly, you can see there is a file called UiPath Remote Debugging Agent.exe. So this is there in my program file. So you check on your computer, where is this uipath.remotedebugging.agent.exe exist? Now all these steps has to be done on the remote, remote PC, okay? Not on your computer, just to understand this file I'm showing you. So this is on my remote PC, here it is available. Now it might be possible during your UiPath Studio installation, you might have installed only for that user, user specific installation you might have done. If that is the case, how it will appear, let me show you. So here I am on my local computer, not on the remote PC. So here if you see, I have installed it locally, not for the entire machine, for all the users, just for this user I've installed. So this is called per user installation. And in the remote PC you have seen is per machine installation. Per machine means program files, per user means in the app data local programs. Okay, now here if I search for UiPath remote, okay. So UiPath robot, yeah. So here you can see UiPath remote debugging dot agent dot exe. So this is the file important. Now once you have determined, where will you determine in your remote machine? This will be determined in in remote machine. You will determine where this installation file is available. So once you have determined, what you do? Go to the remote machine. This is the very first step. Okay. Go to the remote machine. Open command prompt. In the command prompt, I have to get into this folder, okay, program files, because I understood it is there in program files. So I'll go inside this folder by writing CD space program files, okay. Let me try to enlarge it slide a bit. Clear? Now I'm going to hit on enter. So what would happen? I'm entering inside this particular folder. You can see I've entered inside the folder. After that, this particular command, right? This particular command is already given in your UiPath Academy. So this is the command. So if you see, run the following command, uipath.remotedebuggingagent.exe enable port, this is what. So what I have done, I have copied this to a notepad and here I have mentioned the port 8573. So this is the port through which your studio on your computer will communicate with the remote studio, uh, remote machine. So this is the port 8573. So all you have to do is simply copy the code and replace this port number, right? This port number you have to replace with your number 8573 and password you have to put it as 85. So let me copy this here so that it becomes easy for you to compare. Until here. So this is the code given in the documentation. So I have replaced this with the 8573 port number 
and the password you can put any number for example i'll put one two three one two three done now i'm going to copy this entire command i'll go to the remote pc here simply paste this and run it so what is happening in the remote pc it will get minimized if it is minimizes open it again you will see it says agent online and waiting for the command so that means this remote machine is now connected with your machine okay the remote machine is now connected with your machine so you can see a uh, robot on machine rakesh pc is waiting for remote debugging instruction on port 8573 you have a remote debugging agent dot information online and waiting for the command okay so my studio is connect to orchestrator even the assistant available here is connected if you see it here okay it is connected so all set now what i'm going to do i'm going to run it from my laptop so i am there on my laptop i'll go to the workflow so here there's an option called so by default it will it will be something like this okay so it will be something like this so you come to the debug tab click on remote debugging this is how it will appear so here the very first thing i have to do is remote machine and here you have to get your ip address of the remote machine and provide the port number as 88573 and the password that you have set so what is the password that i have set 123123 so i'll say 123123 okay so this password you can keep changing it so after this demonstration i am going to change it so 123123 i'll click on test connection remote machine configuration is valid so you can see the remote machine configuration is valid click on save so once this is done if i am going to debug look at it the moment i hit on debug you can see a green bar has appeared which says remote machine 192168 so your ip address 8573 is now connected okay so now it is connected let me go to the remote machine in the remote machine what is happening it is trying to download the project into a temporary folder so it will take few minutes based on your speed of the connection and now you can see it is downloading assembly you can you know look at it restoring checking compatibility so all the packages that was used in that project everything got downloaded and after that you can see the activity ran on my remote machine and saying good morning rakesh so this is what remote debugging is all about so all you do after you have seen this demonstration and learned how to configure the remote debugging now if you go through this entire course this is going to help you a lot now i'm going to come up with few more videos to see the important critical points i am going to cover so thank you guys for watching Let's meet in our next video.